Here's everything you get in the box with the Dyson DC35. Obviously you get the main unit itself. You get a lightweight wand which enables you to clean your carpets and floors and also reach up to those high places. You get the powered head which incorporates nylon brushes for carpets and very soft carbon fibre brushes which are designed to pick up fine dust from your hard surfaces. You also get this small combination nozzle. So in this position it's a general sort of all-purpose nozzle for doing your curtains, your upholstery etc. And when you press this button here that brings out this quite soft dusting brush. That's ideal for cleaning your shelves and your Venetian blinds etc. You also get this crevice nozzle for getting in the nooks and crannies down the sides of your chairs in between your car seats where you've got your gear lever and um, all those places that are hard to get normally. This is the bracket you can mount the machine on the wall. It also holds two of the accessories. So you can attach that to any suitable wall and you can charge the machine up and store it at the same time. When you want to use either of the tools you just press down on one of these catches to release the particular nozzle you want to use. And this finally is your charger. There's a little light on that illuminates when the machine's charging and it goes out when it's fully charged and that simply plugs in to the back here. So you can actually charge it like this just plug it in, put it on your worktop in your kitchen for example. If you don't want to actually attach it to the wall, it'll charge up either way. Okay, so I've come into my kitchen and I've thrown down quite an excessive amount of dirt to test the Dyson DC35. So you can see in front of me, I've got some flour. So that represents the fine particles that this machine is supposed to be able to clean up. But I've also put down some couscous and some rice and some rolled oats. So I'm just going to pass the machine forward and back through the middle of this just to see how well it will cope. And for the first part of this test I'm going to do it on its regular setting. I'm not using maximum, I'm going to see how it performs using the regular normal powered setting. So here we go. Now that is pretty impressive. I think I've used this machine quite a bit around my home and I, it's got its pros and cons. The thing it does excel at, and this test has obviously proved, is its hard floor cleaning. It does very well on hard floors. I'm not so convinced with its carpet cleaning ability, but for hard floors, considering it was only on its lowest setting, that's pretty good. Now if I run the machine, I'm just going to do a nice cross. I'm going to run the machine across this way, but this time just to see if it makes any difference, I don't think it will, but see if it makes any difference, I'm going to do it on its maximum setting. Well, oh, that looks rather, rather attractive. Actually, yes, on the maximum setting, it does do a slightly better job. I can feel there's a bit more suction. I could feel, as I was moving the cleaning head over the floor that it was sort of gripping the floor a bit better. So all in all, even on its low power setting it does a very good job, but on maximum I can't really fault this machine for cleaning hard floors. Because I hate to leave a mess I'm going to remove the rest of this dirt using the Dyson DC35, but again I'm just going to use it on its normal power setting.
Now before I do a test of the carpet cleaning ability of the Dyson DC35, I'd just like to show you all the debris I've picked up during the last demo. So I've left it in, it's still got plenty of space left, that's a maximum fill line. So we should still have plenty of suction, there should be no loss of suction. So now I'm going to put some dirt on the carpet and see how well it performs. For the carpet cleaning demonstration I've spread various types of dirt on the carpet in front of me. So basically this is the leftovers from various other vacuum demonstrations. It's the sort of thing I would demonstrate other vacuum cleaners with but I've not put down quite so much because obviously the Dyson DC35 is a smaller capacity cleaner and I don't think it would cope with a large amount of dirt in one go. But Nevertheless, this is the same sort of stuff I'd test a big mains powered vacuum on. So in here we have a mixture of household dust, there's couscous, there's rice, there's bits of paper and various types of dog hair all mixed in to see how well the cleaner performs. So I'm going to do as I did in the kitchen, I'm going to pass the machine forward and back through the middle of this on its normal power setting and then I'll do another stripe on its boost setting to see if there's a marked difference between the two. So the first time I'm going to use this will be on its normal setting. Now that result doesn't surprise me at all. Looking at my viewfinder it looks a very good result, but I'm not sure if it picks up on camera very well. Looking closer, it has left the fibres, and if I try and move it with my fingers, you can see the dog hair and the fibres that it's left. Obviously that's on its normal setting, but this is what I found during normal use of this machine. It's okay for surface litter, but it does tend to struggle when there's anything that's clinging to the carpet, especially when it comes to pet hairs. But anyway, that's expected. It's done very well on the other particles, I can't fault it for that, it's just the threads and fibres, the pet hairs that it struggles with. Okay, I'm just going to move the nozzle along a bit further and clean this part, but this time I'm going to do it on the maximum mode. Now, again, on maximum mode I could feel it was gripping to the carpet a little bit better than it was on its regular setting but again even on maximum it has still left the fibres so that is where it fails on carpet cleaning ability it's not very good at picking up the hairs one of the major benefits of using a cordless cleaner is when it comes to cleaning your stairs it's very awkward to clean stairs with an upright cleaner and some cylinder cleaners are quite heavy and bulky and a bit dangerous to use on your stairs. But having a very lightweight handheld unit should solve that problem. And as you can see, you can attach the power head directly to the machine. So now we can use it to clean our stairs. And it has been carefully designed. I'm sure this is no accident by the Dyson designers. Can't see what I'm doing, there we go. The actual head is about the same width as a standard stair, so you can clean your stairs in this motion. And then of course flip over and do the other side, or you can clean the stairs like this. So for stair cleaning it's very convenient and very easy to use, and having the brush rotating on the stairs does help to deal with the more deep down dirt that often a suction cleaner may leave behind. And obviously when you've done the main part of the stair you can remove the power nozzle and attach the crevice tool and do all up the sides and right across the nooks and crannies. And don't forget as well as the treads of the stairs, oops, a bit of dirt's coming out, as well as the treads you can do the risers in a similar fashion. Now some of you might notice some particles falling out of the machine during the last part of the demo, that's because I think it's quite full. It is now past the maximum fill line. So to empty the machine, there's this little red lever here. We just have to push that down and the base falls open and allows the debris 
to fall into the bin. If you have any allergies, I suggest you do this outside or wrap it in a plastic bag and try and trap the debris. That way you're not breathing in any of the dust. But I'm fortunate not to have any dust bound allergies so I can just empty it onto my carpet like this. So you need to give it a shake. Still a lot coming out. But obviously some of the debris, if you've let it get too full, has actually trapped. So you do have to put your fingers in and remove the dirt that way. And then just give it a tap like that. Close the lid. And your Dyson DC35 is ready to use again. Now, despite the fact that it did leave some of the fibrous material on the carpet, it has actually picked up quite a lot of it. As you can see, that's all been picked up during the course of this demo. And of course, all this dirt has been picked up. I've not emptied the machine apart from just now. So all in all, it has done a pretty fair job. I'm pretty pleased with it. But of course, if you want better performance, you can go further up the range. You will pay some more money, but um, it's a good entry level machine. Now that I've finished the demonstration, I'd like to show you a couple of maintenance tips in order to keep the Dyson DC35 operating efficiently. Now the first thing you need to ensure is that the brush roll is kept free of any clinging litter, threads and fibres. Now you can periodically pick off any loose hairs or to give it a thorough clean all you need is a coin, a 10 pence piece and you'll see there's a little slot here with a padlock, a locked and unlocked symbol. So just turn it to the unlocked setting and then you can pull out the end cap here and then in turn pull out the complete brush roll. I believe you can buy replacements if it becomes worn. So now once the brush roll is out we can give the cavity here a good clean because you might find odd bits have got caught in it. Just shake those out and you can give this a wipe. I'd, I'd wipe it with a, a damp cloth, wring it out, dry it with a paper towel or something or use a wet wipe or something in order to give that a good clean but make sure it's thoroughly dry before you reassemble it. And now we've got the brush roll out it's easier now to pick off any threads and fibres and pet hairs that have clinged to it. Take your time doing this. As I say, try and do it at least once a month or more depending on the length of hairs that you might have to deal with. One tip, if you've got another vacuum cleaner, and most people who have a Dyson handheld will have a main vacuum cleaner as well, what you can do, and what I've often done with this particular brush roll, it's small enough to fit inside the tube of a cylinder cleaner or an upright with the hose. So hold on to it tightly one end, switch the machine on and you can actually pass the brush up and down through the hose like this, turn it and you'll find a lot of the debris is removed by the suction of your other vacuum cleaner. But there will always be the odd bits that still stick. So once you've cleaned that up, you just need to put it back in and you put it back in this side first. It just goes into here, twist it until it's located and then you pop the little end piece back on and then lock it to the locked position. Apart from making sure you empty the machine before it reaches the maximum fill line, there are a couple of other things you can do to ensure your DC35 operates efficiently. For a more thorough clean and to access the filter, we've got this little blue button on the top that says funnily enough, filter. So just press that and you can release the motor unit from the machine. And now we can see the washable filter. Now Dyson recommend you wash this about once a month in cold water and obviously you must ensure that it's thoroughly dry before you put it back in the machine at least 24 hours and then you know it's dry. There's a little tab there so you just pull that off, rinse it, squeeze it, leave it somewhere to dry, not over a direct heat, just somewhere warm and then it's ready to go again. If, like me, you have another vacuum cleaner to save washing it frequently, you can just use your other vacuum cleaner and just use the suction nozzle of that cleaner to clean that, and that means you're not washing it quite so often. But from time to time, even if you do that, I would recommend giving it a more thorough wash. So once you've washed it, it just pops back in there, make sure it's located all round and sealed. In order to give the bin a bit of a better clean, 
there's a little switch which you can access. You need to open the bottom of the bin first. And then there's another little red switch here. So you can remove the bin by moving that switch upwards. So now we have greater access to the shroud. You're not supposed to submerge this in water, so I wouldn't recommend it. You can use though another brush or another vacuum cleaner with a brush attachment to give this a good clean. And again, the cyclones just located inside here can get caked in dust after a while. So again, if you have another vacuum cleaner to hand, just use that and it can help to suck out all the dust that's adhered to the inside of the cyclone unit. Give this a wipe over if you like. Again, just a damp cloth, dry it thoroughly or, or again use a wet wipe. But don't submerge this in water because it does have electrical contacts that supply power obviously to the little socket here which in turn provides power to the power head. Well that just about concludes my video for the Dyson DC35. Do I like it? Well surprisingly yes I do. To be honest before I did this demo I was a little bit disappointed with this cleaner. I found its performance a little bit mediocre. It was okay for doing those little jobs around the house but as far as cleaning up pet air it wasn't very good but my demonstration did show me that again I knew that it would leave some of the more clinging litter to the carpet but I expected that but apart from that the hard floor performance is excellent I rate that 5 out of 5 carpet cleaning performance 3 to 4 out of 5 if you want something with a bit more power then I suggest you look further up in the range because of course Dyson do more models than this this is the entry level now discontinued but if you can pick it up cheap it's worth going for, especially if you have mainly hard floors, a few rugs, you've got stairs to clean and you want to clean your car. One thing I would recommend, if it doesn't come with any additional tools to the ones I've shown you, buy the additional toolkit for handheld machines, which incorporates a hose and some other small tools. Now the hose is the most useful part of that toolkit, especially in the car. Yes, it's small and it's compact, but it doesn't get under car seats very easily and some nooks and crannies in your car, because of the bulk of the machine in your hand, it's very hard to get the nozzle where you want it. With the optional hose that fits directly onto the end of the machine, it gives you that bit of extra reach and increased flexibility. So you can put the hose on, attach either the crevice tool or this tool to the end of it, and then you can reach underneath and down down sides of the chairs much easier and it really does increase the versatility of this vacuum cleaner. So all in all it's very good. I'm pretty pleased with the Dyson DC35. If you want to buy one don't ask me where you get them from just search online for the best price. I'm not affiliated with any websites so what I'm saying to you is my own personal experience. I bought this myself I don't make any money whether you buy it or not that's up to you but hopefully this video has helped you choose between this and possibly something else you may be looking at. If you've liked this video, please subscribe because I upload two times a week on a Monday and a Friday, sometimes on a Wednesday. There's plenty of other videos to check back on my channel. Lots of vacuum cleaner, carpet washer and other floor care videos that hopefully will entertain you and help you make the right choice. So until the next time, thanks for watching and I'll see you very soon.